forever and ever. And that's what the ZoomX Invincible does. You're gonna get almost no injuries. Almost no injuries, we did a study. We did a study on it and you're gonna get no, almost no injuries. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling invincible. I just have to be honest. Historically, I've hated Nike shoes. They've been too narrow for me. The, fir the foam has been too firm. Just the shoes have not been great, or my experiences anyway, have not been great with Nike shoes. So I was really hesitant at buying the ZoomX Invincible, but I do like the ZoomX foam. I, I love my next percent. I don't have an Alpha Fly, but I, I thought a full length ZoomX shoe would be quite intriguing. So I pulled the trigger and my wallet is a lot lighter because of it. And yes, I did buy this shoe with my own cold hard earned Canadian Monopoly money. But anyway, that's enough on that. Let's get into my experiences. Starting off the specs of this shoe, and this is kind of interesting. So this shoe has 36.6 not 0.5, not 37, 36.6 millimeters of stack height in the heel, 27.6 millimeters in the forefoot for a nine millimeter drop. Don't know why they're so precise there, but anyway, that's, that's interesting in itself. But then the listed weight is for a men's size 10 and the listed weight is 314 grams. But I wear a size 10 and a half US men's and I put it on my scale and it weighs in at 300 grams. Now, my scale could be off or for some reason, I just got like a ZoomX lottery win and I got a light shoe for some reason. But so yeah, my size 10 and a half US men's comes in at 300 grams, which that's really interesting to me. But anyway, but enough on that. Maybe that's a whole video in and of itself. Let's talk about the midsole. So yes, as I've mentioned, the midsole is full length ZoomX and guys, this has to be the most soft shoe I've ever had on my foot in the history of the world. It's just, it's, when you first step in this shoe, it's just like you're being completely absorbed by the foam. But it's magic because you're bouncing. It actually feels like you're on a trampoline, which is absolutely nuts. And the sensation is, I have to be honest, exactly what I'm looking for in a max cushion shoe, such as the ZoomX Invincible. Now, I've tried many max cushion shoes over the last year, but none have felt like this ZoomX midsole foam. But because this foam is so soft, I was concerned that I'd be completely unstable out there and my ankles would be rolling every which way and I would probably get an injury from this shoe. But because they make the base of this midsole so wide, that's not what I've been feeling at all. It actually feels relatively stable when I'm out there running. In addition to the heel clip they have on the upper, but we'll get to that when we talk about the upper. But yeah, so this foam is extremely soft. You sink right into it, but the magic of ZoomX just starts sprinkling in its little pixie dust and bounces you on your next stride. That's exactly how I'm gonna describe the feeling of this midsole, but not like the next percent. You're not bouncing forward. You're kind of oscillating up and down. That's the best way that I can describe the feeling of this ZoomX midsole in comparison to a ZoomX midsole that has a plate. The ZoomX midsole in the ZoomX Invincible, you do bounce a lot and it does make you feel like you're, you're running relatively fast or if you're not running fast, going easy just feels so easy. It's really absorbing all of that impact. There's absolutely no ground contact feel. You, you barely know that you're on the ground to begin with. You feel like you're on a trampoline. For me, when I'm out there running along, when I land at the heel of this and roll through, it feels absolutely fantastic. I'm a heel striker, so keep that in mind. I get a mouthful of ZoomX when I first land. Through the midfoot here, it's completely loaded with ZoomX. And by the time that I reach the forefoot and I'm about to toe off, that sink and feeling definitely dies down just because there's not as much ZoomX in the forefoot. So that's to be expected. It's so good guys. Like the ZoomX midsole in this shoe is exactly what I've been looking for in a easy day and daily trainer. And it's gonna be hard for me to really wanna run anything else at this time. Like it's, just, this midsole, um, I hate to hype it up so much. There are issues with the shoe that we'll get to, but the midsole guys, I have to give it a three out of three because it's exactly what I've been looking for. I want a shoe that I can sink into, but will also bounce right back up for me. And guys, that's what I'm getting. That's the sensation I'm feeling in the ZoomX midsole. It's nice and wide, so I'm not getting really a bad pronation. Just, it's just, it's treating me so well right now. Three out of three. Now. I have a quick word for my Nike shoe engineer to tell you guys a bit more about the ZoomX midsole. 
My name is Nathaniel and I work on the Nike shoe design team. The team and I decided to come up with the Invincible Runs for a couple of reasons, but mainly because we knew a shoe with full length Zoomex would create tons and tons of hype, we could sell a bunch of units, and me and the shoe design team would get a huge Christmas bonus, and well, we could buy some... I mean, um, we decided to use full length Zoomex for its rebound properties and its protective nature to keep you runners running longer. Do you think they believe me? If you're enjoying the video, why not hit that subscribe button and maybe the like button? Love to have you. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so this upper, I guess, is a fly knit. Now, like I said, I don't have much experience with Nike shoes because I don't really like them. But what people are saying is it isn't actually like a true fly knit material. Sure, it doesn't matter to me. I don't really know what it feels like. But for this upper to me, it does feel a little bit cheap, I have to say. And I'm a little concerned with how the durability of the upper itself is gonna hold up, but I don't know exactly. Anyway, let's get back to the heel here. So like I mentioned, it has a little clip here. And I guess what they're trying to do with these clips in the ZoomX Invincible and also in the Infinity React is give you a bit more stability so your heel's not rolling around as much. And like I said, I don't feel this shoe to be too unstable. So is the clip doing its job or the wider base doing its job or a combination of both? Who knows? All I know is it doesn't feel unstable. The ankle collar is quite plush and plush in ways that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, I can understand a plushness inside. That makes sense to me, sure. But why would you have extra padding like on the outsides here and around there? Makes almost zero sense. All that's gonna do is absorb a bunch of water, get all sweaty and nasty, and make this shoe really heavy on damp days. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but sure, I don't get it. The tongue here, it is gusseted. I, you know how much I love a gusseted tongue, so ding, 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 ding. They did something right with the tongue, although it is, I find, a little bit short. The tongue, it's a little bit short. Through the midfoot, I don't find this shoe narrow at all. So that's one thing, like I said, with Nike shoes, I found it to be a bit narrow in the upper and always would cause me pressure. But so far, I haven't had any issues. I'm able to lace it up quite normally. Like I have quite a bit of give in the laces. So I'm able to get a good lockdown through there. I have to say the lockdown has been fantastic through the midfoot and the ankle and the forefoot. Like the, there's been no sliding around. Once you get to the toe box here, it isn't super wide. It's not a super wide toe box, but for me, it really just, it fits well for me. I've gone true to size. I don't know if I mentioned that. I did go true to size, 10 and a half US men's. Then the upper has been, it fit relatively well. It's comfortable. A lot of questionable decisions though. Uh, like I said, I don't know why they added in this extra padding and the like extra structured overlay and the reflective material here. Just. A lot of questionable decisions, Nike, and you could have really, you could have lost a few grams there, at least if you decided to omit those things, but you didn't. But you didn't, so we have to docky points. And in addition to that, I did feel a little bit of a hot spot on the ball of my foot, I think it was. I'm not sure if I should, I don't think that's so much the upper. And I, like I said, I didn't feel my foot sliding around, so I'm not quite sure why I felt that hot spot at after about, I think it was around five kilometer mark, I started to get, started to get a hot spot on the ball of my foot. Don't know why, I didn't feel like I was sliding around, I didn't feel any rubbing, but it's definitely gonna be something I'm gonna be aware of. And because of those things, because of the questionable decisions, because of the potentially blisters that I'm gonna get from maybe not the upper, but the, something going on up here, I have to dock at points. It's gonna have to go down to a 2.4 out of three for my subjective score that is completely accurate, although it's not accurate at all and it makes really no difference. And that is my initial impression score of the upper, 2.4 out of three. Let's move on to the outsole after a word from the Nike executive team. Hi, I'm with the Nike executive team and we decided to price the ZoomX Invincible at 235 Canadian dollars because it's an experience and we want you to go out there and keep on running forever, forever and ever. And that's what the ZoomX Invincible does. You're gonna get almost no injuries, almost no injuries. We did a study, we did a study on it and you're gonna get no, almost no injuries. And in addition to that, it's the full experience. Like when you're out there running, we don't want you to stop running. So we want you to recall how much you paid for these shoes and you won't want to stop running at that point. You're just going to want to keep putting miles into it because 
Yeah, not everyone can just keep on buying $235 shoes and it's just an experience. I forget exactly what marketing name they gave this outsole, but what it is essentially is like little rubber pods sticking out. They're probably about two millimeters thick. I, I really enjoy the look of it anyway, and it, the performance so far has been admirable as well. I've taken it out on rainy days and snowy days so far, and I intentionally ran on slipperier spots, and it did a great job in giving me a good amount of grip on the pavement. They also have these two little green pods in the heel and the forefoot here, and my guess would be to protect that Zoomex. Zoomex is pretty fragile, so if you're running directly on the Zoomex, it's gonna wear down quite fast, and where this is an easy day and daily trainer, we wanna protect the Zoomex as much as possible. For the outsole so far, I can't see any real issues. Um, again, my completely subjective, totally accurate, not accurate at all score is gonna be 2.7 out of three just because there is a lot of rubber here, but it makes sense. They did what they had to do. Overall, I've been thoroughly enjoying this and I cannot wait to put more miles into this shoe. I think we're gonna get to 50 miles for that full review quite, quite quickly. Now, the price. Yes, the price of the shoe, no, 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 just no. 235 Canadian dollars. That is actually insane. And it's insane that Nike does it because they know people will buy it. They know that this shoe is gonna sell out and it's cruel. It's absolutely cruel. They should at least, I don't know, $200. Why not 200? Sure, they put in a lot of research to develop the ZoomX material, but I, on, I, don't, I can't see how the manufacturing can be any more than 90 to $100 for this shoe. So the margin on this is huge. It's huge. Anyway, guys, that is my thoughts on the Nike ZoomX Invincible after about 10 miles of my first impressions. Now, let me know. What do you think about this shoe? Have you tried it yet? Are you going to try it? Or are you completely appalled by the price? Hope you guys have a fantastic evening. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you want to see a previous video on a shoe review, I did the uh, Glide Ride 2, which is a different shoe, a really different shoe, but equally, I really enjoyed that shoe as well, but a different feeling altogether. So leave that right up here. And I hope you have a fantastic day.